Welcome back to another video. I'm Hale the Blacksmith. If you're new to my channel, usually I'm in my shop making stuff, but today we're gonna do an anime sword review. So the swords that I've picked are from anime I've seen or just caught glimpses of and really like the builds. And as a blacksmith, I really wanna make these swords. So make sure you comment below the sword you wanna see me make next. To start, we're gonna go with Asta's sword, the Demon Slayer. It is a beast of a sword, and I should probably go over how I'm uh, ranking these, like what are my rules. Basically, it's going by wieldability, aesthetic, and possibility of making them. There are tons of anime swords, and they all have crazy abilities if it's like a magic-based sword or something like that, but I'm not going off of their like power level. I'm going off of the functionality of them, like can I make this in real life and can I swing it around? And Asta Sword, though it's a beast, I think it's possible to actually swing around and it's quite, I think it's, I think it's makeable. The only issue I have with it is the fact that its handle is so thin. The weight of the blade would actually probably snap the handle in half and it would totally ruin the sword in entirety. But I believe it's possible to be made I just don't know how sturdy it would be. So I'm going to give it a solid C tier. It's a really nice sword. It's rust aesthetic is probably going to cause some deterioration in the metal. But other than that, it's a pretty mid-level sword and I rank it C. Next, we're going to go with Elucidator or Elucidator. I don't know how it's pronounced. I have seen Sword Art Online. This is Kirito's sword, his main sword that he uses in the first show. I really like this sword and actually have always wanted to make it because Sword Art Online was the first anime I ever watched. I think its functionality is quite, quite fine. It's a lightweight sword. You can one hand it, you can two hand it. Definitely a sword that is highly wieldable, highly makeable. Its cross guard could have some problems with uh, structure, but other than that, I think I'd rank it a B tier sword. Something I would actually use in battle if it came across my path. Next, we have Shikai Zengetsu, which, if you guys don't already know, is probably one of my favorite swords, simply because it's massive. I love massive swords, and I've made it before, so I actually do know its functionality and its wieldability, and it's immediately going S tier, because this sword is so fun to train with. I've been doing a daily training cycle where I'm trying to master it. I'm trying to unlock my Bankai, you could say. So this sword is Ichigo's sword from Bleach, and it is a beautiful piece of work. It is quite structural. The handle is thick enough that it can withstand the weight of the blade and it flows. It's a smooth blade that can cut really nicely and stab. It's really beautiful and it's gonna just go S tier immediately. So this next sword has been highly requested that I make it, but I've also seen a lot of other creators make it. It's the Dragon Slayer Sword from Berserk. Now this sword is massive. It is huge, it weighs a ton, however, I don't think it's unwieldable. If you've made it with a weight decrease, but I would probably keep the size the exact same, it's just maybe a thinner blade so it's not as chunky, you could definitely wield this and swing it around. The handle and cross guard are actually quite functional as well. It is an actual sword, just upscaled a whole lot. And I would probably rank it A tier, maybe S tier. I'd probably go A tier just because the weight is probably far more than I'm actually expecting since I haven't actually made it before. The Shikai Zengetsu sword from Bleach is actually only like 20 pounds and is very wieldable. I think the Berserk Sword Dragon Slayer that Guts wields is quite heavy and probably a little unwieldable at times. Next we have the Scissor Sword from Kill a Kill, which is uh, wielded by Ryuko Matui. I have not actually seen this anime and it looks pretty good. I just saw the sword design and was like, this is ridiculous. I've seen it made before, and it looks a lot of fun to try. Now, I'd have to rank it probably a little lower than the others, maybe C or D tier, because it's not that functional in reality. The blade shape is kind of wonky. It's definitely a usable sword. It's just the handle to the blade is not ergonomic. You'd struggle to hold on to it, but it would be relatively functional. So I would say I'd go C tier because it's a lightweight, I would, no, I'm gonna move it up to B tier because it's more wieldable and structural than Asta's sword from Black Clover. So our next swords are actually daggers from Solo Leveling. They're the Venom Fang Dagger and the Night Killer Dagger. 
they're quite structural. I do like them a lot. I really want to make these, so make sure you comment them below. I don't really like this serrated edge when it comes to like carving stuff, but you're trying to cut through monsters, goblins, golems, things like that. So they're definitely meant for slaying monsters. So I'd probably honestly put these S tier because, because of their structure, because of the way they're made. I really do like them a lot. I would knock it down to A tier just because they're daggers, but their length are closer to short swords, not going to lie. So we're going to leave it in S tier for now. The next sword is from Seven Deadly Sins. It's Meliodas' sword, Lost Vein. This sword is a beautiful piece of work. I actually really like this sword a lot and desperately want to make it. I have seen it made before, and I don't really want to be a copycat, but it is a beautiful piece of work. It's a one-handed sword and is highly wieldable. Its structure is all there. My only flaw with it is the holes in the spine of the blade. Those can cause structural damage if you're blocking with the spine. But other than that, it is a very wieldable sword. I'm going to put it in A tier simply because of those holes in the spine that can cause structural damage. Our next sword is Dracula Mihawk's sword from One Piece. It is Yoru and it is a beautiful sword. I really do like the look of it. It's one of those massive swords and I, I can't deny that I love massive swords. The only flaw with this is its massive cross guard. I get it, it's an anime sword, it needs to be quite aesthetic and quite overdramatic, but the overextended cross guard can become quite hassling when you're trying to swing it around. It'll get hit on your wrists and your body and can cause a bit of delay in your attacks. However, it is a beautifully aesthetic sword and its structure is there. The blade is not actually as heavy as it looks and the handle length is perfect for maneuvering all that sorts. It's only the cross guard that I have a problem with, so I might put this B tier because of its because of the cross guard. I do love the look of it. It's just functionality is not there when you're trying to wield this in reality. And making it, it is possible to make this. It's actually very possible. I just don't know if that cross guard is going to be quite fun to swing around with. Now our next sword is actually one that I've really liked. I watched all of Naruto, and this is Zabuza's sword. Oh, if I can pronounce this correctly, it's the Kibikiri Bochu. I think that's correct. If that's not, I apologize for botching it. This sword is a massive beast, and it's just, it's really aesthetic. It looks really cool. Now, its major flaws are what make it so cool. It's the sun and the moon crescent that are cut out of the blade. They look really sweet. They're a nice aesthetic. They're really cool. It's just the flaw in the structure of the blade. You bash that against something or someone blocks it with another massive sword, you can just shatter your blade right there. And also, the thin, thin handle. I get it. You want something that your hand can wrap around, but come on. You're going to break it right at the cross guard. That's where every sword breaks. Basically, it doesn't break in the blade as often as you think. It would most likely break in the handle. And because this blade is so heavy, the handle is so thin in contrast, and it's bound to break. I'm going to put it down in, I honestly might go D tier. I do love the sword. It's a beautiful piece. However, it's so much weaker than Asta's sword from Black Clover. It does look cool. I actually like it more than Asta's sword. It's just, its structure is not there and making it would be quite difficult, but it's definitely one that I do want to make. I should have like a separate tier list where it's like the swords I want to make and rank those because, uh, these would all be S tiers. I really want to make all these swords. Our next sword is Soshiro Hoshina's from Kaiju number eight. He's the vice captain and he wields the twin swords SW2033. These are beautiful blades. The aesthetic is there. They're thin, they're sleek, and they're quick. I really like them. My only flaws, again, are the serrations on the back, which I don't see any necessity for, and the holes in the blade, the slit down the blade. Not really necessary. But the aesthetic, I get it. It's just you're causing structural problems right away in the blade, which isn't ideal at all. But other than that, I do like them and I would really enjoy making them. However, of all the swords, these would probably be the least likely that I'd want to make because they look so manufactured. They're not like the massive, crazy berserk swords or anything like that. They're just thin, they're small, and they look... Well, they are in the show made by a tech company, not made by a blacksmith or anything like magic based, anything like that. So they're probably honestly D tier because of the lack of interest I have in making them. I do really like the swords. Their aesthetic is there. Their structure is not there. And 
I don't really see a necessity to make them because I can make way more massive swords. So I'm going to probably put it D tier because they're not that unique. They're not that outstanding to all the rest that we've had. But other than that, I do like them still. I'm just going to put it in D tier. Now we've got a popular one, of course, Zoro Swords from One Piece. I honestly don't know if I can pronounce the names correctly. It's Wado Ichimonji, Sarai Kietsu, and Enma. These are the three swords that Zoro is using currently, I'm pretty sure. And they are beautiful swords. There's nothing wrong with them. These are Im immediately S-tier swords because they're katanas, first of all. Beautiful swords in general. They're structures there. We know katanas have been used for centuries and they are masterful swords. Now, three of them, only Zoro can really wield that. But I think they're beautiful, they're structural, and obviously I really want to make some more katanas. So S tier immediately. Our last sword is Toji's sword from Jujutsu Kaisen. It's the split soul katana, and it is... I think I like this better than just a casual, your generic katana. Simply because of its size. I've already mentioned how much I love massive swords, and this is just a massive katana. It is beautiful, it's aesthetic, and it's totally, like, buildable. So, I'm going S tier as well. It is probably... I like it probably better than Zoro swords. Zoro swords are just katanas. They're nothing new. So, the soul splitter katana, or the split soul katana, sorry, is just a beautiful piece of work. So, all these swords are swords I really want to make. The S tier possibly more wink wink make sure you comment which one you want to see me make and i'm going to get started on it right away so make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video every monday i post videos as well as live stream monday nights and thursday nights and whenever i feel like it in between i've been posting shorts as well of me training with shikai zengetsu if you haven't seen that video make sure you go check it out and yeah that's pretty much it you guys thank you so much for watching and if you like this kind of format of content Perhaps I'll do it again sometime. I really want to rank some Elden Ring swords or Dark Souls swords because those are some that I really want to make as well. Like the Grafted Blade Greatsword that I made a while back. You can check out that video there. But as always, thank you so much for watching and God bless. See you on the next one.